Thank you very much, Deficio. And you know, they talked a lot about unique picks there, but before we want to send it to the casters for a dive in today's match, I want to take a look back at one of the absolute craziest matches we've seen in Europe in quite some time. Last week's record setting 64 kill bloodbath between the Unicorns of Love and Fnatic. And we talked about crazy picks. Let's start with the picks and bans from last week because there were some crazy and some new things thrown in there mainly by Fnatic on the new side. So Fnatic playing uh, a pretty standard comp up until the support. You can see that they've got a lot of bursts here with the Nautilus as well. A lot of crowd control coming out from this team composition. But it's the Unicorns of Love that we want to focus on a little bit here. And now uh, Cassiopeia has come back into the meta a little bit, but Yorick hasn't seen too much play. But this composition as a whole is actually a bit of a Unicorns of Love special. They've run this before when they were in Challenger against H2K in the playoffs in the semi-finals last year, and ironically against Forbiven. So Forbiven should have had a bit of an idea of what was coming. Fnatic have the better mid-game comp, as we already said, Unicorns of Love. This is a high late-game scaling comp. Essentially, you use the Yorick ultimate on likely the Cassiopeia. If she's dead, then the Caitlyn at a, a kind of a last chance saloon. But this is a late-game comp. However, the mid-game and the early game were actually controlled pretty well from the Unicorns of Love. So when we go to uh, what would eventually be the first blood here for Proud of Evil in the middle lane, Starting this clip off, the ult speaks for itself. I mean, you just see Forbiven get absolutely annihilated as he goes in on Power of Evil. So once we run this out, you'll see that very quickly after the beginning, uh, Power of Evil will end up landing that ultimate. But the key thing here is the exhaust that follows straight after. Forbiven can't output any damage at the same time, and it's an easy first blood here for Power of Evil. And this play was fairly straightforward when it comes to an outplay from Power of Evil, but it's actually echoed throughout the entire game. Flash forward a little bit into a mid lane fight a little bit later on here, which was a two versus four, which should have gone in favor of Fnatic. But as we roll this out, what you'll see here from Fnatic is they land a lot of crowd control and damage onto Kikis, and Power of Evil turns his attention once again to Forbiven, lands a lot of damage, blows him up to begin the fight, and then it's a matter of two tanks and one damage threat here from Huni that try to get onto Power of Evil, who as he gets ultimated, look at the exhaust here on Lissandra as she heads into the team fight. The uncoordination from Fnatic not having both damage sources there at the same time nets Power of Evil a double, and it's a great outplay once again by the Unicorns of Love. What we want to do is take a look at how the team comp should work by the Unicorns of Love later into the game. So this is one of the fights a little bit further up the map in front of Fnatic's base. And you'll see the Unicorns of Love pressuring Rain over in. He gets chunked very hard. And as the team fight progresses, you'll see in just a second here, that uh, after rainover has gone, Forbiven comes in. He's already uh, got two kills and three assists to his name, but he just can't find the damage here once again in a team fight. And Power of Evil, as the ultimate comes in from Sejuani, ultimate is going to come down from Yorick here, brings two Power of Evils into this fight, and it's an easy cleanup. Fnatic use all of their bursts, and it's only Forbiven that survives. So that's what happens when the team comp goes well. What happens when the team comp doesn't go so well? We're actually going to take a quick look and have a bit of a, another mic check into the team audio as uh, Unicorns of Love would end up losing a fight. Can we fight them? Can we fight okay, them? Let's yeah. go. Okay, let's go, I think. Um. Corn, uh, yes. they, they used ultimate on uh, Sejuani. I'm, I'm on Sejuani I'm now. Dead. I'm on Lissandra. Lissandra no ult. Lissandra no ult. Yeah, I'm hitting Sejuani for now. She flashed out. Lissandra no ult. I can't get Lissandra. to her. I need to... Oh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, guys. You oh. need to back. Graves is bad for me. I will back up. Yeah. They are four men alive though, they will look to push now. They will try to finish again. Yeah, they might try and finish together actually. And you can hear Vizichachi there saying, I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it, I couldn't get the ultimate down. Uh, the rest of the team fights for the game, we all saw how the Nexus was so close twice. Unicorns of Love would win the last desperate team fights. If you caught mic check, there was a whole load of screaming in the later fights. Uh, but let's take a look at the player who tied all of the mayhem together. It's our week eight and the only two-time MVP of the spring split, the Unicorns of Love's power of evil. He had an absolutely amazing week last week. Bringing back his quintessential picks, the Syndra came back into to Power of Evil's playbook and the Cassiopeia. He had a fantastic week in last week's games, and we'll see whether he can continue that with the last two games of the season. Now, to get us into our last game of the day, we're going to send it over to the Caster Desk for a look at today's lineup.